want to decide whether we want to have this opt-in or opt-out option. I mean, that, that's, that's the question, right? Yes. Okay, that is the, because if we decide not to go with the opt-out, then we don't have to worry about language. Okay. If we decide to go with the opt-in, then there's a chance to review the language. Okay, so what are, the, what are the questions about the two basic positions here? Are there any concerns or questions? I don't have any questions. I, I didn't support it originally because right. I frankly think we've done enough to urge people to vote. I think there's some responsibility or some level thereof to get to a town clerk and get yourself registered. So if we so you don't don't have to get yourself to a town clerk, right. you can register right there. Right. Yeah. Which is, for me, the big plus is that you meet people where they are. And, and I think that's part of the gift of, of the DMV. They are registering a car. Here, they're registering to do something they need. And actually, it's a nice opportunity to remind them that government is helping them and supporting them in whatever program they're getting assistance on. And so you'd think that they would also want to be a, a, a voting member of society. So I think this is a good thing, the opt-in. I just think we want to make sure the language is positive. OK, you're a, you're a yes for opt-in. I'm a yes for opt-in. You're opt a no for opt-in. Correct. I mean, for opt-out. Opt -out. You would prefer having opt-out. You would prefer having opt-in. And okay. I think it's been very successful uh, at DMV, and I think build on success. Right. You want automatic registration. You do not want Correct. automatic registration. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's not the same. What do you opt for? <laughs> uh, you. Or do you have questions? Do we have questions about it? No. I, have some questions. I have one. I prefer the uh, opt-out. The default will be you'll be registered. And, uh, but for a question, I we had talked earlier about how many different agencies might right. be available so, to okay. do this. And I don't know if you have a count or a list or whatever it is. Did you, would you, would, none of us have, we don't use our laptops in here. Would you read us the list that you sent? Or you sent it to Gail. I will, but I'm going to make it an important point yeah. first because of what the senator specifically asked was how many agencies are going to be able to do this or are going to do this. The list of currently designated agencies will not all necessarily right. be able to go to this method. So my best answer to that is only those agencies that are collecting the necessary data to register to vote, and for me, as a practical matter, those that collect it electronically and can transmit it to us electronically. I'm not saying that that's not required by the Act, but that's part of the deliberation discussion process that this mandates between me and the agency. Are you right. collecting the necessary information? Are you storing that information electronically, and could you send it to me? And to be honest with the committee, I think that most of the agencies, other than DMV, aren't ready to do that yet. Got it. And what this language requires is for me to work with them to get to that point. And, that, and it only would allow us to designate them to go to an AVR process when and if they're ready to do so. That being said, I can give you a quick read of I just don't have any sense of scale. Sure. It's mostly agencies under AHS. So you have Dale, you have all the district offices of the Department of Health across the state that send us these forms. Did you send that to Gail? No. Oh. Okay. I only sent it to you. I was hoping you could forward it around to the next I, committee. I, I oh, hardly ever see my email in the middle of the day. <laughs> my dad. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's going to Gail right now. What's that? Can you copy that to him? Okay, I'm yeah. sorry, I thought So My fault, Madam Chair. I, I, my, I apologize, I wasn't. And now if Gail could send it around, the, the committee can scan down this list on your own. No, 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 we don't, we're not, no. We don't have. Excuse me. Well, you're not it wasn't here, we're not. We're <laughs> see, do, you, do you remember what this was? I do. I'm close. I'm not. I'm no tech master myself, as you can see. I'm still sending you emails. Okay. So we you like started. That. You started naming some of the agencies that that currently do it or that might qualify. These all currently provide the okay. opportunity to register to vote on an opt-in basis. And who are they? But again? will not necessarily be able to do the opt-out, but we will explore it. Examples: Dale. All uh, Northeast Kingdom Human Services, Northwest Counseling and Support Services, Clara Martin Center, Rutland Mental Health, Washington County Mental Health, every district office of the Department of Health across the state, DOC, Healthcare and Rehab Services of Southeastern Vermont, DCF, 
Economic Services Division, Child Development Division. Those are some of the biggies. So that. all of the DAs and all of the community action agencies. Yeah. Folk Rehab Vermont, Rutland Mental Health Services, Northwestern Counseling and Support Services. Did all of these sort of programs and agencies. I doubt it. They, I don't think any of the DAs collect citizenship. And so we won't be moving forward with those. Right. So the ones you move forward with are the ones that collect all the data that we need to be a registered voter. Yep. Okay. So there's nothing untoward. Nothing <laughs> really isn't. Right. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, do any of these agencies, do they have to be authorized under law to collect citizenship information? For instance, if someone says, right. we'd love to do that, what do we have to collect? And then you say, well, citizenship. Can they add that to a form, or do they have to get legal permission to collect? Mm -hmm. We don't want them to do that. Okay. And that'd be part I, of the I, process, I would, would be asking that question. I would object to this at all if I thought that agencies were going to start collecting citizenship information so that they could do this. Okay. I Only would not. if it's nationally done in the course of the work you're doing. Right. Here, here. No worries, just asking. Yeah, I know. I'm so I guess I I have no issues with with um, having people automatically register. But I really um, maybe this is just my stubbornness. I I really would like to see coming back here and saying these are the agencies that would that are ready and willing to participate and they collect all I mean that they're they're qualified mm -hmm. and then instead of giving just automatic approval for you to do any agencies um, come back and say these are the four departments or agencies or whatever that would like to do it they're not going to be ready by January anyway. So, but what this is just asking for is, is the green light to go and have that conversation. No, this is saying they can automatically do it once, once if if an agency is ready, if HCRS and they says, work with you to make it all let work. Let me finish, please. Oh, sorry. Um, if HCRS says we for this particular program. We collect citizenship information. We do all of this. We electronically collect it and can do it. We're ready to go. This gives them the ability to say, you're ready. You can do it. And it gives them the ability to start doing it. They don't have to come back to us at all and say, HCRS would like to do this. Should we go ahead? Well, we could also just ask for a report, because Will's going to be doing this work with them. We know that that is the... the, the that, that's what I'm saying, that I would like them to... I would like to have us approve the agencies before they, those before are they automatically are... Uh, before they automatically adopt it. I, uh, I don't know if anybody else feels that way or not. So I think we can do both. Can't we do both? No, this gives them the automat the ability to automatically start doing it. That's what I'm saying. Is that, okay? You, it does pursuant to yes. the authority you would grant us through this legislation. Yes. yes. So where you would be saying, we like how AVR worked at the DMV. We right. see what a great success it's it's been there. We trust the Secretary of State's office to evaluate these other agencies and work with them. And Senator White, to your same concern, that was a concern in the other body as well. And you can trust me and Secretary Condos to do it in a reasonable manner, right? But what if you get a really crazy ABR obsessed secretary next time, seriously? Uh, and I'm really, yeah. So some breaks that were put on that is that language has been inserted that allows so an agency head can say no. That's pretty significant. Because you're saying we're, we're, that this law is going and letting the Secretary of State do this if they're ready. It now has one pretty significant limit on that, which is that the agency head can say no. Does that include you? You could say no? Yes. Well, he can say no if they don't meet the qualifications. Right. right. So, and and so to Senator says, Clarkson's point, the bill just right now to take that issue off the table makes us report on an annual basis any agencies that have been designated. Yes. So there's your report, right? There's so we're not doing it under 
cover right. and not hit. I'm not asking for a report. Yeah, but I understand what you're saying is we would, we, you, you're suggesting we would have to come back on an individual basis for each agency, and that's yeah. reasonable, but that's, this is sort of saying. I, I realize that that's what this is doing. That's what I'm just saying, what my, where I, my concerns are. So the if other HCRS, point. if HCRS yeah. decides that they're going to do it and they're, they don't collect citizenship information now, but they read this and they say, boy, it would be great to get everybody in Wyndham County registered, and they cover both Wyndham and Windsor counties. So they start asking citizenship questions because they want to be able to do this. First of all, I don't want them to do that. And it also says that, it, so it would be the commissioner of mental health that would approve it. It may not be HCRS director. I, I mean, the commissioner of mental health is going to give the okay for HCRS and the designated agencies to do this for you to work with. I, and I guess that's okay, but they're an independent nonprofit. That language is written as the agency head, right? That's the or yeah. other. I, I believe it would be. It says head of secretary, head of commissioner, of, yeah. other the agency. So the agent, it would be the aid to the out external agency. I read that as the head of HCRS. That's how I understand. That's that. okay. That HCRS means. is the voter registration agency. That's how I was reading it too. Yep. Yeah. That's why. I think that language was added, not only Secretary Commissioner, but four other applicable heads of the agency. And Senator White, I can see what you're suggesting, of course, too. I would tell you that my practical experience is we're going to have to drag any of these agencies kicking and screaming into this process, if at all. Typically, these agencies really want to focus on their core missions. Right, and they should. So I. I really highly doubt that any of them will say, oh, I looked at this bill, I want to start collecting citizenship and doing automatic voter registration as a result. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> it's more that that will be the, the easiest excuse as a reason not to have to change anything. I don't know your experience. You've had a lot of experience with state government and okay, well. shaking off of the status quo is typically the harder thing. Do we have any sense of how many people, when they're asked, uh, say, decline to vote to register at any of these agencies? Well, the PMV would be our best. Course. No, they because that is, they're automatically registered. Mm -hmm. Right, but they have to no, decline to vote. Just... No, I'm asking if the, at Dale, or when somebody goes in to apply we... for foods for Medicaid, they have to declare their citizenship. Do, and they're offered the ability to vote. Do we have any idea how many people say, no, I don't want to register to vote? Or yes, I do. Yeah, I know, but I'm concerned about the people that don't want to vote, who now would be automatically registered to vote unless they positively uh, resist it. So I, I'm just wondering how many people we have any sense of how many people well, decline. So right now they're not given so much yes, the opportunity they to are. decline. They're mostly given the opportunity to accept because it's an opt-in. They have to say yes. Yes. So I want to so, know how many people say no. Madam so I don't Chair. think you'd have a record of that. Yes, we do. You do? Are you, Madam Chair, are you asking me that question? If, if you have the answer, I would love to hear. We get a number of declinations yes. from these agencies. Okay. That's the, a question. The, consistency of their reporting that could be better I can get you what we have okay. it's not a percentage of their applications though so it's that's a little a bit tough because you it right so may I ask the <coughs> other side the, the, because they which is part of the federal law by the way excuse me Senator Clarkson yeah. they either have to send us an application for anybody who filled one out or send us the number of declinations Got it. Yep. so could I ask the positive side of that which is at the moment it's an opt-in how many of these participating agencies and departments, how many, I mean, do they send us, how many people choose to register? That I could work on for you also. We have this application source search in our checklist, one of those being agency registrations. It's a very small percentage of the total applications we get. Right now, 75% of the voter registrations we get are from DMV, online, 
or on election day. And may I add, and so I assume that the concern in this section is, is raised by people in, this, in these areas who would think that, the, that we could get more registered voters if we, if we turned it around and didn't create such a barrier or what they perceive as a barrier to registering the vote. And that barrier is, why is that a barrier? Uh, the opt-in, I guess, is my question. All studies show that opt-out rates are significantly higher than opt-in rates in all sure. contexts. So what would also be interesting, just generally for us to know, would, would be that once, if we went to an opt-in, how many people actively then vote? It would be great to be able to track of the opt how many actually fought through? The thing is, we've only got like 48 hours to make I, There are a lot of groups that are interested in that data and ask me for it right now from BMV, what you're saying. So how many of those that got registered through and yeah. opt out, that didn't opt out, ended up going to vote? Because I think that it's would be very interesting decision. Well, that would be something for us. that would be a follow-up after this. You know, if we implement something like this, you can come back in a year. Well, he has it with DMV. But, do, but do we know the specific people? Because do it's we know? Hard. We don't know if if um, 17 people read, got registered to vote through DMV. We don't know that those 17 went and voted. There's no way of knowing exactly. that. Yes, there is a way to know it. It's just it's time consuming to yes. fix that. Yeah, and do we? Does that really make a difference? I think it would actually be very interesting for us to uh, to know because the objective is to get more people engaged and more people voting. However, even you know, if they are registered to vote in the DMV and then they're not voting, that's a concern to me. That, that's 55 percent of the population right. that's registered to vote. Right, but it's an opportunity for us to improve. I, th I think, I think the important point, though, is it has certainly can. been shown that regardless where it comes from, if you're registered, you're more likely to vote. Sure, right. I would just like us to focus again on the question that's before us, which is Thank whether you. or not we want to go forward, go ahead, go forward, and allow this to happen instead of trying to predict the outcome, so yes. what, who's going to vote? Okay, so I'm an opt-in person, what are you, I mean, I'm an opt-out person, what are you? I'm an, I, I would support the opt-out. I, I must admit that I'm more open to this idea than I think I was last time we talked about it. I don't know if it was last year, last session, last month, I'm not really sure January. what it was. <laughs> it's all time warp at this point, but I feel less, less, less hesitant. I think it would be opt-out. With the, within the parameters of the way this is laid out, which is the commissioner or the head of the department could would have to agree to do it, realizing that it's probably only going to be a handful, if any, if, if that, you know, you can come back and tell us in January or next session, next year, how it's coming. To me, I, I, I've tried to think of different ways to characterize this. One somewhat humorous one might be the will don't procrastinate bill. This is, it's codifying what I've intended to do for a long time, right. and it's pushing me to do it and saying I have to do it and report and whether I have or haven't. Have any of these agencies or departments or agencies asked for this? No. Where is this coming from? You? Yes, and the Main Street Alliance. And a lot of other advocacy groups across the country who are seeing how effective ABR is and wanting to expand it beyond DMVs. A lot of the, the legislation that's passed recently in other states says do it at DMV and look into it in other agencies. Has these two things paired? We're essentially putting the second part on now, having done the DMV before. Chris? So I, I don't know how much more testimony or editing we might do, but I'm ready to vote it. And part of that is because the I try to think of what's the downside. You might have people registered to vote um, that simply didn't show up. I don't see anything more negative yeah. than that. We register people all the time that don't vote, which is sad. Um, I don't know. I, I feel more comfortable if there was some kind of a, maybe a sunset after a year that I, I, I just want to make, I, I really am afraid that what's going to happen is that agencies are going to begin to collect citizenship information so that they can, if they think that um, it's good, that they're going to start getting pressure from people 
to automatically register people to vote and that they're going to start collecting citizenship information so that they can do that. That uh, ties, tell me I'm crazy, but I, we spent a lot of time dealing with the fair and impartial immigration um, policy and judiciary and in here. And I, I just think that that is a huge issue. Chris? Well, I thought I asked a question earlier about do they need statutory approval to collect that information? And I thought the answer was yes. Like they can't just start collecting. I don't think I don't they need know. statutory approval to collect that information. But that's where I feel comfortable because this is the check to that. Well, how would he know? If they don't he's current, work with each department. No, if they don't currently, if somebody no. reads this and then they say, Look, we could, so the Springfield um, Department of Health wants to get a lot of people in Springfield registered to vote. They don't currently collect citizenship information. Could, would the, they say, let's start collecting it so that we can qualify for this? Yes. So to that, I'm just asking Bethina about, are there any provisions or enabling language around citizenship status? So I'm wondering if, we considered adding language that said that uh, an agency can't start collecting that for the purposes of simply doing this without approval. So some kind of check in at the time, though. You could add something in here that said only, only um, agencies or departments that collect citizenship information as of a certain date. So the language in the current okay. bill that has proposed, Does it say that? Such, such designation shall be limited to a voter registration agency, one of these agencies or programs, mm -hmm. that in the regular course, that word regular is important, that means not adding something new, of an, the agency or program's business already also oh. implies status quo, already, already. is collecting okay. and verifying okay. the documents mm -hmm. necessary. What page? Uh, is that against 12? 13. 13? Yeah. 13. Oh, I see. And whose agency head has said Sorry, which it's okay? House. Yeah. About the fifth line down, yeah. the sixth yeah. line down. Yeah, okay. That's the, your operative language of, mm. of this whole thing. In the regular right course, the agency or program's business already collects and verifies documents necessary to provide uh, proof it. of an individual's eligibility. And Madam Chair, that's where my kicking and screaming comment was. Right. The, the thought, the notion of a DOH agency saying we want to register more people, it's, that's not our core mission. Why are you asking us to even get into this at all? Because it's federal law, I'm sorry. Um, the, the possibility is still there. And the other thing you mentioned, which I think is more real, more realistic, is the outside pressure. If they started getting a whole right. bunch of advocacy groups saying you should do this better. That, right, that's my. That's a possibility. Um, but we could put the brakes on that if we hear it, it, it's happening. And I think this language here, you know, they already correct, collect it in the regular course of their business. Okay. So then is the belt and suspenders piece saying something like, you can't collect this information for the purposes of solely for this purpose, only for this purpose. So that someone would say, oh, we're adding this field to data we already collect. And the purpose of adding that field is to make themselves eligible to participate in automatic registration. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't oppose that additional language. And it would apply to all of these four, all of these things, like mission, physical address. Mission crew would be a lot. Right, right. right. So it would apply to date of birth, physical address, legal residence if you don't have to if they don't have to already do that. I don't think an affirmative statement to that effect would, would do harm and might address your concern. All right. Fine. Don't worry, I was. <laughs> Still sitting. All right. Um, well, it seems like the committee wants to, I would, I would add that sentence an affirmative statement sure. to that effect, that they cannot collect any additional information for the purposes of this. Oh. Right. Of accomplishing this. Unless they, well, I mean, I can see them, 
Okay, yes. Right now, and then I think if, if, so if you, in the course of your conversations with them, it comes up as a possibility that they uh, might want to, then you'd bring that back to us. I would. Yeah. Okay. So we're uh, three, one and a half on that one. <laughs> Okay, we're okay with that? I'm fine. Okay. The other questions that we had then were the, no, the dates, and I think that we heard, um, Will do want to talk to us about the dates that uh, Representative Shaw had talked about. Sure. Betsy, yep. do you have that? Mm -hmm. um, I think that as it turns, just give us your spiel. Sure. I, I am actually agnostic and fairly neutral on that language right. um, to the extent that I had actually proposed something very similar in the first draft of the bill that came to this committee. And it, initially the concept also, and I think the concept still does have the clerk support, but the more that the clerks looked at the language and thought about the practical impacts of it, the clerks withdrew their support for this provision and asked me to remove it from the initial bill. If it comes back into the bill, the clerks are going to want to come in and talk to you about it. Um, reason being, so what this addresses is when a local election is held on the same day as a general or other statewide, basically the August primary or November general election. And towns and cities like to do that because you get the turnout, so it's not an uncommon thing. We often have a local question being asked on those same days. Technically, those are two separate elections to proceed down their own course and just happen to be held on the same day. So under current law for the local election, ballots have to be ready by 20 days before. For the statewide election, ballots have to be ready 45 days before by federal law. So it has led to the situation in a lot of towns where the clerk has to send out the statewide ballots 45 days before. The local ballots aren't ready yet. The select board just hasn't signed the warning, figured out the wording, et cetera, done the necessary hearings, if you're talking about a bond vote. Um, so their ballot's not ready at that 45th day. It is ready by 20 days, but a second mailing happens. And you'll get a bunch of clerks in here who will testify the fact that that's confusing for voters. I take those calls. A lot of times the second local ballot will come back unvoted because, hey, you already sent me my ballot and I don't want to vote too by accident. That's what it's trying to address. The simple language in this bill is, okay, so if that's the case, if you're holding the election on the same day, the local ballots are due 46 days before, too. Seems simple enough. That's pretty much what I propose also. Just the mandatory nature of that and effect of it, I think, was uncomfortable for the clerks in terms of having ballots ready that early before the election in all instances. And the way Carol framed it to me, they can do that now if their select board gets their act together and gets the process all in place by there's nothing that there's nothing that says your ballot your local ballot can't be ready 45 days before and if she has a sense that her legislative body wants to hold an election and a vote she makes that clear to them well get me the ballot 45 days before so i can send it out with my general election ballot and i think they just ended up not supporting the idea of that being mandatory if you're going to hold that election so I think it is well-intentioned. I see where Rep Shaw is coming from. I don't know if he has heard the feedback from the clerks yet that I did. Because I think that when we first looked at it, it, it was they did in concept supported it. Yeah. So then the... Another yeah. issue is that right now the deadline for submitting petitions to get an article on the ballot is 47 days. Right. So you, in theory, could have somebody come in with a petition for an article on that 47th day, and if this was passed, your local ballot would have to be done the next day. Which is why the city of Burlington actually proposed over in the house an idea that I think makes a little more sense, too, to help address this problem is to move back that petition deadline also to 60 days. From 47, so that any local question petitions need to come in in time to get a ballot ready for this 45 minute deadline. This would take a lot more thought than we're able to give it in the next hour. I agree. 
people. I'm sorry. I guess I'm just not understanding the problem. I, I mean, we do this every year at town meeting. Town meeting. Every year we have the possibility of a general election, a primary, and local You elections. don't have a general and election in March. March. No. We general have a primary, presidential primary in March every, every four, four years. years. Every, not every year. Every four no, years. but every four years we do this all the time. That's every a fair years. point. That 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 we every four years every it four happens years. by statute. Right. Yeah. That happens all by towns. statute. Every four years. That's like not a big deal. And in the sure. fall we have a general election on which we uh, uh, often. A lot of towns like to take advantage of that turnout. Yes, and, and a, a lot of towns meeting. use that for other elections. For other business. Yep. So we already doing this. I don't understand why this is the problem. This doesn't have to say one way or another whether you can or can't do it. It just says if you do it, then the ballots for the local election have to be ready 45 days before. The same time that the federal ballot has to be ready, so that they can all be mailed out together in one. So they it, and so this is for uh, absentee votes. Correct. Okay. Okay. That's the right. problem. Yep. So nope. I'm, I'm just really. And it's a benefit to, I think, the clerks in terms of not having to do two mailings, to the towns in terms of the mailing costs, and to the voters in terms of confusion, lack of. But any town can currently do this. Can do it if they just get their act together. If they get their act together. Days. But it, I have to say that it is really hard for select boards to I get agree. their act together. 40, and, and for a petition, if a petition comes in, on the 47th day you need and your then attorney to tell you whether it's legit or not and whether it's worded properly properly and then you have to whether get it there signatures. then you have to get it to the printer the same day so that they can print it so that you can send it out a day later yeah yeah i think i think you're right anthony for instance to it to senator polina's point i think the lct would probably want to weigh in mm -hmm. if being a, a burden placed on select boards been on a select board, I would hate this. Aren't you glad you're not on one now? <laughs> and it's to their benefit to try and do it themselves, right? Because then is. their absentee voters all get it at the same time as their federal ballot are more likely know. to it vote it. It makes total sense. Yeah, I support the amendment, but I understand what you're saying. I, I think that making it mandatory yeah. is the and, problem. And I think for, for Representative Shaw to, to legitimately say we're aware of the issue and we'll come back to it. I would like to also to see if this isn't the right way to go about it. There might be. A, a uh -huh. How can we do it? Maybe we can change. In consult that. with the clerks, Carol will work with us to come up yeah. with something that they could support. So could we do something though next year, even yeah. though it's in an election year? I think we could. Okay. Oh well, that's a good question. No, I, I think well, well, we can we can do something. It may not um, Take apply effect. to okay. the general election of twenty whatever that year is. Twenty twenty. But it might apply to the March election, the next of twenty. Okay, yeah. could even apply it in the fall. It, we can think could, about it. But yeah, we could. Okay. The ones we don't like to change in the election year, like the deadlines or contribution mm -hmm. amounts, right. the ones that apply throughout the whole. Will you be able to explain to them our discussion? And, and I, I'll talk to you. Offline or or in yeah in well, any context. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk to you. Okay. Because I did promise him we would take this up and yep. look at it. Just a reminder, it was in there, and the clerk supposed it, that we should talk to them and figure out a way to do it that they can support. That yeah. That's yes. the simple message. Oh, oh, I think okay. that that's essential. Yep. So let us look. We have two more issues that we might want to think about tacking onto this bill, um, tax and regulate. Oh, We're also putting that on. That uh, there are about four other bills I'm putting Minimum that on. Wage. <laughs> Minimum wage. Minimum wage. Paid family Is this an H bill? Tuition free college. Tuition free college. This is an S bill. This is an S bill. Thank you. I can run for college. What else do you got? Ryan, anything you want to put on here? Yes. I'm all set. Magic wand. Minimum wage. I think definitely we could do our minimum wage proposal. Yeah, the wish list. Yeah, I think. Um, I think we have another vehicle. That but we there are there are two actually bills that we did pass that right. do affect elections. One you is the corporate that. contributions, and one is the um, public. The, How about the, the and the public financing? All we did was change the date and then set up a 
I need to go to study committee, right? We changed the date, but we also allowed people to take some money from their oh, yeah, yeah, right, advance yeah. from the general right, right. The primary. So, um, anything where, else that's up there that they haven't voted on? Where are we with um, that? I mean, I would like to put them on. Yeah. We've already passed them. So we're doing public financing? And well, we're well, talking we're about a, them. We're making a slight we're, change to public financing. And so let's take one at a time. Can I just get some water? Would anyone else like some water first? Uh, Those are big things to discuss. I'm fine. You are? Yeah. Okay, I'm dying of thirst. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll be right back. Brian, where were you on the change to the public financing? I mean, I know you oppose public financing in general. Right. Yeah, I was a no. You were a no on the changes? Yeah. Okay. And thank you, Edward. Thank you so much. And um, where were you on the corporate contributions? Oh, the, not the court, not banning corporate contributions, yeah. but Betsy's ingenious. Oh, stop. Oh. Some, somebody suggested to us. At the behest of the committee. At the behest of the committee, our elect council person came up with a creative solution. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, okay. remind me what that was. It was, it just says that only individuals. Oh, yeah, I was in the tax authorities <laughs> rather than trying oh. to define a corporation. You yeah, I like corporate. I mean, I like them. I, I do too. I'm a firm believer. I do too. I never had enough money. <laughs> Actually, I I like corporate contributions as long as I can wear them. I don't care who yep. gives me the money. So I was a no on both. Okay, I was a yes, but but I might just violate the law if we pass it. Take corporate contributions. I don't take corporate, <laughs> I don't take corporate contributions, so it doesn't matter to me. I know. I, pass along. I know you don't. You just get double the amount of money from the. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> from the um, the principles. Yes. <laughs> you told me that one. Um, so we need. In we my need, opinion, Madam yes. Chair, if you're asking for it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> the effect of tagging either of those on will be that we go to a conference committee and risk losing the very, very important provisions that are in this elections cleanup bill. And as the elections director, I would rather that those be bills left independent of the elections cleanup bill with very important administrative changes that need to get passed right now. The one option would be to just do one of them and see what happens. Thank you. Did they take up either of these? Not that you I'm know, aware of. Uh, I, so. I might have done a walk through of the corporate contributions. If I didn't do it this year, I did it last year. And they took it up twice. last year in almost the exact same form. That's yeah. when they had Ben Cohen come in and be heard that their testimony also late in the session. Right. I think it's the history. And, they, and then the parties came in. Yes. Um, so, Allison, what you missed was that Sorry, the nice. director of uh, elections is reluctant to add them onto here because he's afraid that we will end up losing all the the um, administrative cleanup stuff that really needs to happen this year and that cannot happen next year in our elections bill in our elections bill that there are things in here that he needs he needs we all need we all need he needs in order to administer and we need in order to have good elections but don't you think we given that we all need those things wouldn't there be an imperative to pass the bill no matter what was on it the, the how, more uh, if I can that. say what the house will say is exactly the same thing that um, we as committees are saying about the house right now you're putting on temporary workers things and we've taken right, right, no right. testimony on at all and expecting yeah. us to do yes. that and then we're putting on Two things that they've taken no testimony on this year at all. Oh, they didn't do any work on these. They had to. no. They they. I have to say, Sarah Copeland Hansen has very masterfully um, taken testimony and done the tax and regulate bill. She has spent a lot of time on that, and she did it in a way that 
she so she spent a lot of time on that. I don't think she anticipated getting that bill. No, and I don't think she did. So she guy, has no, a she new did. chair and getting this bill that had nothing to do with GovOps. She didn't have time, a lot of time to take up issues that have to do with GovOps. So that that's why, I mean, it isn't that they opposed them, but they... They just didn't have time. She, she worked so really then, hard on that. Okay, so, so then let's we'll honor the integrity of S-107 as it is. And not add too much. I, I'm, I, Anthony, go ahead. Well, I do think that the House did pick it up, court contribution bill, because they don't like it enough to bring it up, because they hadn't brought it up for the last couple of years. Oh, Having said that, I would, I would prefer to tie it into this bill, but I'd be more than willing to recognize that I would lose that vote, and we could just go with the 107 as it is. I think, and I, I don't know that. Sarah didn't bring it up because she didn't like it. Different chair this year, you have to well, remember. That's true. Completely different chair and different committee. And I, my guess is that they would both be more amenable to both public financing and corporate mm -hmm. contributions than they were in the last right. Um, because uh, of the leadership in the committee. It's just frustrating when we pass a bill like five times and we can't seem to get them to. Mm -hmm. But also it's much. frustrating because this is the natural vehicle. For, for, is, for both is. of those, actually. It is. Well, um, we, we do have several days, so I mean, we could. No, we don't have several days. If we. This okay. Would, this would, you're talking about dealing with this on Thursday or Friday, and sending it back to the House in time to be done by Saturday. And you want this, and we need it done. So, I, right. So, we, we should send it unencumbered, is what it sounds like. I, I would add that one um, positive note, though, about the um, that they cannot begin to collect yes. information solely for this purpose. Right. That's, I thought we already agreed to that. Did Betsy agree to that? She's written it already. I agree. She's got it. Okay. That. I, I would commit for what it's worth, and it may not be worth much at all. To doing whatever I can to help you guys move those bills early next year. Okay, that would be great. Well, whatever you say is always a lot. <laughs> but the, the challenge with the corporate contributions, I think, for some of us, is that it won't. That is substantive enough so that that wouldn't have impact until twenty twenty two. And I also right. just think that the reality is, really is because bad. of how substantive they both are, they won't happen this year. The effect would be the bill not happening. I just. For the reasons you cited, they would have to be taking way more testimony that can happen realistically. And we just we just said the same thing about bills yeah. that they sent to us yeah. that we didn't accept because we didn't have time to take testimony. Yeah. So right. okay. Thank you. So with so the heavy part, change. I will come back. So we will concur with further proposal of, of comment, whatever that's called. However, we say that. <laughs> That technically means it needs to go back to them. That does. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. They can look at it in two seconds and say, oh, that boy. You can it. also talk to Sarah and tell yes. her that's coming. And that's all. And she can prepare her committee. And they'll be fine with it. I think it makes sense. Okay. Thanks, Sorry. you guys. Thanks, Will. No, it's okay. I thought, we, I thought it would be pretty easy, but when I think about it, We'd be doing the same thing to them that they're accusing no, us. Well, fair. we've gotten some big things added by the House and the Senate yeah, Economic yeah. Relations, so I'm going to let them change the nature of the bill. Thanks, so. I appreciate it. Yeah. We're having to. <coughs> OK. So what next? Uh, let's see. We're done with 107. We're done with the charters. We, uh, we did 135. You're reporting that tomorrow. Alex. Yes, and I yeah. asked John Thank Quinn you. for all the yeah. stuff I need for finance and to approach. go to finance and approach. You know why uh, the 135, the ag agency of digital service, went over there because there's this section in there that it says they charge fees for their service because they're in. Yeah. So it has to go there. Then it's going to have to go to appropriations because they're going to figure out how to spend the money once it's collected. Yeah. So okay. So we have the resolution. Yes, let's move the, that forward. Yeah. 
One, so. Do we get any word back on 134? No. Not yet, no. So I don't know if you noticed it today. On the house calendar, they had H16 on there for, um, you know, their report of whether they were going to support our our amendment. I, I saw that. And they had only printed half of the bill in the calendar. They didn't have anything about the E911 board, about the Artificial Intelligence Committee. That there were a whole bunch, nothing about arbitration. They didn't. They Is that had, just a mistake, though? It may have been just a mistake. Well, it was a mistake. Yeah. That's a big one, though. But it's a pretty if you want to substantial up, mistake. Yes, yeah. yeah. thank you. They just didn't print. They didn't print it. So. Um, bring that. Okay. Steve right. Marshall went and talked to Bill McGill, and um, and they have taken care of it. But that's why, if you hear anything, that's why they didn't do okay. that bill today. Before I take this yes. up, can I add that we had testimony from Senator Sears? Yes. Would you call that testimony? I thought it was just sort of. Yeah, no, he, oh, he explained it. it. Okay. All right. I'll add it to the list. Um, and uh, Tim and Tim Corcoran and Mary Morrissey shook their heads. <laughs> yes, they were a supportive they cheerleaders in the back. Oh, actually, Tim, they both said a word. Yep. So, yes, I would. And Campion Corcoran. went in and out of the room. Yeah, he never Tim said Corcoran. anything, so I'm not giving him credit. Corcoran and Mary Morrissey. Okay. Yeah. Tim speaks with his eyes. Um, yeah, I would add them. Thank you. That also gives them a little cover in the in Bennington if yeah. anybody's listening. Okay. We pay family leave at three thirty. Oh, oh, we are going to. Well, okay. Good. Well, then I'm glad. I just need to prepare you. Yeah. Let's do this yeah. now, then, so we don't have to come back. Exactly, because if you're depending on coming back, yeah, we may no. not be back. No. So we Sorry. have the latest. Um, the latest uh, <coughs> version of the. Oh, do we have a latest version here? Yes. We should have mm -hmm. two point one. Okay, two point one. Mm -hmm. And I've got a copy of it here. Yeah. It's changed substantially since the last couple of times we've talked about it. All reference to um, mission options. Yes, we took the mission out. out. But other than that, I thought it was pretty, and then we it, it got the quotes better. Well, it also puts the focus on Vermont's long time leadership in opposing the spread of nuclear weapons, which I think is something that people in this building will relate to, as well as people outside the building, obviously. But yep. I think reminding them that the General Assembly voted for nuclear abolition of nuclear weapons is a good reminder for people to have with them. So I think that. We've made it more appealing to the to the Senate and, and while keeping it on target. Who I shouldn't use that phrase. Well, <laughs> <laughs> keeping it, while keeping it with the spirit that the citizens wanted it to be when they originally proposed it. Right. Yes, and consistent with our resolution of many years ago. Right. In 1999. So this is sort of. You know, it's 20 years later. This is the update. <laughs> well, part of the problem was talking to somebody about it. We also closed Vermont Yankee, obviously, part of it, because we were concerned about the effects of nuclear power. Right. But we've gotten so used to us as Americans living in a constant state of war, like all this bad stuff going on around us so much that I think that we've forgotten about it. We have not thought enough about nuclear weapons in a long time. I, think. I agree. Is a good reminder and wake-up call that this threat has not gone away. In fact, it's coming. You well, could argue we're closer than ever. And it, yes, in fact, it's going to be insidiously embedded unless we do something and stand up and say no. Right. So, a procedural question: We will vote it out today. We'll bring it up. It'll be in the calendar tomorrow. Right. Um, I don't know that. Um, do resolutions do the same thing? They go on notice? Okay, so it'll go on notice tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow is tomorrow Thursday. So Friday, it'll be voted on. Mm -hmm. 
the um, I don't know. We generally don't read resolutions. Right. Oh, sure. but Steve just uh, what? Steve just read the resolution. That yes, well, that but that was, was a very right. special. We hardly ever read resolutions. Right. I understand. So the question is, given the fact that um, a lot of people have committed to vote for it, do we really want to read it? And um, do we want to encourage not having a uh, roll call vote? I would ask my, my two questions. I think those are good questions. Uh, I would prefer to have it read, it's not that long. And I would prefer to not have a roll call vote. Um, but I, but I, I thought, I could be wrong, obviously, but I thought that since it was treated as a, as a bill, treated like a bill and sent to committee, that we would present it at like a bill on the floor. Oh, I interesting. Could be wrong, but that's just my assumption that they treat it as a bill sent to committee. That's because there's poli any policy right. in it, or, or even if there isn't policy in it, if they don't want to put it right on the calendar, mm -hmm. they treat it as a bill. That's, so I think um, we have to ask John Bloomer. We actually. should. Yes. So let's chat with, because you know, actually it would be wonderful if you presented it, or either one of you presented it, it would be, uh, it, I would think that would be great, better than it being read, quite frankly. Sure. It will be distributed to everybody's desks, yes. because it's so different, obviously, from what was initially uh, yeah. present, uh, introduced. So um, I think it would be much better if we explained it briefly instead of it being read. Right. Well, so I would um, so check with yeah, with Bloomer and and if they treat it if it's treated like a bill, then there would be a report right. on it and a and the um, ref, re, reference to the committee <coughs> vote and however you want to do that. And I would um, I I would ask that you present it. I you've been more involved in it. You were right. one of the original sponsors. I was right. not. It's true, you were not. I was but we're glad you've come along. <laughs> and um, the, uh, I would ditto that. Okay. And out of deference, I can uh, speak with, well, I don't know who might be on either side. Right. I, I can speak with people that might be on the side I'm going to find myself on not to request a roll call. Right. I, well, that's I've, why we're, I would not request a roll call. I've been asking, um, I've been asking people when they either say yes or no. Um, oh, please don't. Please okay. don't right. I'll ask for a roll call. I won't ask for Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. Do, can I go find Chris? Do we know where Chris is? He's in the conference. Oh, I'm oh, oh, sorry. I actually didn't hear that. Yeah. So, but he, we can keep it open yeah. for him because we know he's, yeah. he, he yeah. was a, a reluctant maybe at the beginning, as it was I. And I think the both of us have come around. No, and I have to say, I've come around because of all the work that's been done on it. I would not have come around to the original resolution. Right. Right. Well, I think two things were, were as I watched, I mean, because I was in early. <laughs> Pauline and I were in it early and often. But I think what impacted us all was the hearing. The committee hearing was very powerful, I thought. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I thought that was great, and I'm really grateful that you pushed forward on that, Jeanette. Thank you. Yeah, I think we'd be in a whole different place if it wasn't for the hearing. Yeah. It was pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, it was powerful. Okay. And, wow. So do, is there a um, I'll motion? I make a motion that we uh, move, uh, that we vote out SR5 as amended. Oh, that we draft amend SR5. Uh, with draft 2.1. That's the first thing. And uh, so uh, Bray is not here. Clarkson, yes. Col Colmore? No. Polina? Yes. White? Yes. Okay, and the second motion is to pass out SR5 as amended. And uh, Ray is still missing. Clarkson is a yes. No. Carl Morris, no. Polina? Yes. White? Yes. Great, thanks. And I'll get Chris on those two votes. Good. Good work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair. Willingness to stick with it. Yeah. 
Well, and to move forward, not just stick with it, but to right. move forward with it, because that was the big decision. 